Hi, I'm Linda Amon, Amon Arts. Welcome to my world of art. And today I'm going to show you how to make carbon paper. Um, if you make it yourself, there's a couple things I like better than the store-bought. Mainly, it's easy to do. I can use it over and over once I make it. And I find that it's more erasable and, than all the brands that you can purchase. So we're just going to show you a couple ways that you can do this. I'll show you my favorite first and then I'll show you another way to do it. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard so that I don't get the table all dirty. I'm wearing gloves because we're going to be using some materials you don't want to get onto your hands. So I have a graphite stick, a 6B, in a stick like this, and then I also have it in a, in a little tiny couple little pieces that are flat, more of a little chunk style. Whatever you buy, just buy it as a 6B. 6 is in the number, B is in boy and it works really really well. I found that's one that I like a lot. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and darken the page and you're going to find it's real important not to just brush it across like this but to actually kind of like you would crayon in something and you're just going to come across and get it all blackened. It's a little bit messy and that's why you want to wear gloves. I found that this graphite paper will work over and over and our students in classes, the artists that come to my classes use them all the time. They borrow them and then eventually they make their own and I just find that they are really good and I've used this method for years and years. Once in a while they'll wear out but it takes a long time that you can use them. If you're careful and practice a little bit you won't tear the sheet. It, remember this is a good quality tracing paper so it's a little bit thin and you've got to be a little bit careful. The other thing that you can do is just come over even more than I do and it would be even darker but I'm just going to do it quickly here so that you can see what we're going to do. Can you see how it's blackening up? And then we're going to use um, we're going to emulsify the color in because if we used it like this it would smear and when you're working with your work it would be kind of smeared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lighter fluid and you are going to take a little bit of paper towel. You're going to work outside with this or in a well ventilated room. For the video I'm inside the house but I've got a window open and I'm going to be very careful to air it out soon. And then what I'm going to do is a little bit more on there. I'm just going to, on the paper towel, gently rub and when I do that it will start blackening and emulsifying that in. So I'm just going to, if you do it too vigorously then what will happen is you'll take off all the carbon stuff that you just put down. And if you don't do it enough and you don't wet it once in a while because it does evaporate, if you don't do it enough then what's going to happen is you're going to end up not having it blackened and hold. Because when you're done with this there's very little smearing. Once it's dry you will just set it aside. You can keep it in a little plastic Ziploc bag and be able to use it often. I'm just going to come through one more soft across so it's nice and black. I'll show you that. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Got one spot here I'm going to do just a little bit more. There you go. Then take your gloves and pull them inside with that paper towel inside and then this is going to go outside of your home. That's a self-combustible possibility because you're using light, lighter fluid on a paper towel. So that is going to be thrown away safely outside of your home. I'm going to let this dry and while that's drying I will show you a piece that's finished. This is how it's finished. You can just fold it over and stick it in a little baggie and use it over and over once it's dry. Then what I would suggest is on this side that is not the carbon, on the back side. You see that's lighter, that's the dark. Give yourself a smiley face on there and you can put this side up for words so that you'll remember to put this is this side up and it goes inside for your um, information. So you would slide that in. So now I'm going to show you how I would use it as a tracing paper. So here's my photo 
that is of some tulips that I'm going to do a watercolor of. And here's the drawing that I did. And on the drawing, if I did it straight onto my watercolor paper and erased a number of times in my drawing, it wouldn't be as good for my watercolor paper. So if I do the carbon as the way to use it, then I wouldn't have um, multiple erasings. So I'm going to show you how I line up that carbon sheet that we made. Now remember, we have the words this side up, so we know that that's the right direction. And what I do is I take a little piece of tape and I hinge the top of my pattern to my watercolor paper. And then the first thing I do is take four little marks. One, two, three, four. I'll show you what that is. What I do is at the edge of the paper, I give myself what I call insurance marks. So I've got all four corners where I've got that down so that if I trace everything, pop this off, and then realize that I forgot something, I can line it right back up. So I'm going to take my this side up, keep it top, slide it under. Don't ever tape your carbon under because it's easier to just slide it under with your hinged area. And then I'm going to trace. And you know, you know, depending on your eyesight and how dark you want that line or how dark you made the carbon, you actually would trace it differently. So I'm just going to do a little section there and show you how it has traced down. See that? Now, this is the way that I do it. I like this. Now, if you don't have the lighter fluid, don't want to go through all that, your other choice is to take your pattern and you're going to take a regular pencil and you're just going to side the pencil line everywhere across the page. This takes a little bit longer. I It smears a little bit more. It's not as dark. It's not reusable. Well, it's reusable for this pattern, but if I want to do another image, I'd have to do this to the other image. The graphite paper is wonderful because I can just use it over and over every single time. So I'm just going to do that much of it. Now, we have our insurance marks, right? So I can lay that up into those four sections. i got my tape there still. So I can lay it down. And then what I would do is I would be able to, wherever that was blackened, on the, on, on the back side of the drawing, I can come through and continue the drawing. So that's two different ways. And you can see it's lighter here than my other marks. And I think if you did more pencil mark it would work better, but those are the two ways I would do tracings to get your watercolors kind of ready to go. So you can do your drawing first, line it up, you can slide your tracing paper underneath. If you ever do the wrong side up, you'll have a beautiful tracing on the back of your paper instead of on your image that you want down for your, for your work. So I hope this gave you a great tip. Um, this is something that I've done for years and years when I want to do the drawing first and then place it as a tracing down on my paper ready to go. I will show you real quick. It's very erasable, which I told you. Um, the graphite that you buy quite often has a little bit of a waxy film and you can see I just erased all that up there. can't see it at all. So that's why I like this. Enjoy it. Linda Amon, Amon Arts, thank you for joining me.